Hey guys, Shinmiri here, back with another in-depth deck guide, this time on Full Test Commandos. As usual, if you want the full deck list or a text version of this guide, you can find the links down below. So Full Test Commandos as an archetype has transformed from a meme all-in deck playing cards like Operator and Doodoo -Doo to an absolute powerhouse over the course of several patches. This latest improvement utilizes Northern Realm's recent reworks and buffs in patch 3.1 to fill in some previous weak spots. This deck is one of the very few NR decks that do not care about the opponent's removal. It has both a powerful long round with Draug, as well as an explosive short round with Blue Stripes Commando carryover, making it one of the top tier decks of the current meta. So let's take a look at this deck, shall we? So this deck has a lot of different ways it can win. In the long round, we have Draug. It's a great long round win condition of this deck. With the nerf on Gimpy Gerwin last month, the only cards in the game that can really counter Draug are a well-timed Pitfall Trap and the Super Lock from Ox and Serret, which requires Last Say. Area of Effect cards like Lacerate and Timboy can also do well against Draug, but it will still be worth at least its provision cost in a long round. Outside of that, the only other way to deny Draug value is by bleeding it out in round 2. Viggo's Muzzle is not a card that you typically see in Full Test, but it is extremely useful in the current meta. It can be used to control powerful engines like Caleb Mange or Hefty Helga. It can deny carryover from cards such as the Flying Redanian. And in the case of Vandergrift or Gabor Zygrin, it makes your opponent's carryover work for you. And you can also seize Blue Stripe Commandos in the mirror that also denies their carryover and gives you more carryover. Note that the Northern Wind in this deck provides carryover denial in the same manner as Muzzle does and it is perfect as a low, round, a low provision round one card. Previous versions of this deck lacked removal, but now it has a robust combination of Muzzle, Selkirk of Gullet, Prince Anseus, <clears throat> and the Northern Wind, as well as Draug's Kidwenny Revenants. This is usually enough to shut down your opponent's important threats. All right, moving on, we've got Roach Merciless, is the card that really protect, propelled this deck to tier one status. Its rework basically makes it a third Blue Stripes Commando, but on steroids. It is often 11 points for 11 provisions, but with huge bonus of also being able to thin out all the commandos in your deck for a massive tempo swing while flooding the board with humans. This role used to be filled by Queen Adalia, but Roach does the job a lot better for the same provision cost. Roach has more tempo than Adalia, and we're not required to draw Roach in round 1 in order to have an extra way of pulling out commandos in round 3. The only downside is that sometimes Roche can struggle to find its death blow and may require an extra zeal. But Roche is flexible in that it can be used in round 1 or saved for round 3 depending on your draws and the situation. The next big win condition is Bloody Baron. Bloody Baron is another example of a high provision gold card that received a rework this patch. It can be thought of as a more expensive and more powerful version of Peter Sargwenlev. The big difference is that Peter can sometimes brick for only 3 points of value. Baron can never really be worse than an 8, even if you have no reset targets. It is a card with a high point floor and an extremely high point ceiling. <clears throat> Baron is extremely valuable in a round 2 situation where your opponent is trying to bleed you. It can provide a huge tempo swing and force the opponent to give up on the bleed due to a fear of a hero pass. This might make the difference between whether you are whether or not you are able to save commandos for round three, which is pretty crucial. Now, summoning circles in this deck to help with consistency in finding the blue stripes commandos and blue stripes scouts package in uh, in round one. It's also a proactive play for this deck, which means that uh, it helps with some awkward situations because you don't actually have that many proactive plays. One often overlooked strength of Summoning Circle is that it allows us to play a Commando and a Scout on the same turn, which will result in us having two Commandos with orders available. This means that our opponent can only answer one of them, so we can still play our second Scout or Reinforcements for 8 tempo rather than just 4. Circle is not even a liability in a short round 3 as long as you can end round 2 with at least one card in your hand, because even a 4 turn Circle is worth 8 points on a Blue Stripe Scout, or 5 or 6 points on something else. But if the meta has a lot of artifact removal, you could substitute in Visigard instead in this 8 provision slot. 
Pavetta. Pavetta has always been a key combo piece for this deck. Pavetta enables us to play our commandos twice in one game. With Roche Merciless acting as our as our round three access to commandos most of the time, we tend to play Pavetta in round three more often than round two to reduce the mulligan pressure and give ourselves a better chance to draw into our gold win conditions. Ronvid the Incessant, uh, another card that got buffed for Northern Realms in this patch. Ronvid received a two provision buff this patch, making it a six for six that provides carryover not just in points, but also in the form of a human body. This is great for Draug as not only do we get an extra Revenant, but we also get a one strength target to death blow with our other Revenants. We round out the deck with four provision humans that provide a mixture of value, Draug targets, as well as proactive plays. The Blue Stripe Scout is our MVP for Provision Bronze, as it's an 8 tempo play that provides two human bodies when played on a commando. And if you play it before round three, Scout may also provide carryover in the form of four points and one additional human body. That's really good for a four Provision Bronze. A Dernian Mauler breaks our trend a little bit on having not any, uh, not having any removal targets, but it is on average more points than the next proactive bronze, which I would say is Kidwini Cavalry, and it can sometimes help us up help us set up the death blow for Roach Merciless. So what's the general game plan of this deck? This full test commando deck is a relatively flexible deck and has multiple viable game plans due to it having a strong long round as well as a strong short round. The long round strength mainly comes from Draug, while and while that is a pretty big threat. It still loses to, deck, to decks specifically built to win run round, such as Scorch, Igni, Regis, etc. However, our short round is second to none, assuming that we have last say, decent commando carryover, and sufficient zeal from our leader. A very general game plan is to copy commandos round one, either win round one, or if we lose round one, then we have to prevent getting bled too hard in round two and losing access to our commando combo for round three. At some point, we will shuffle all our commandos back into the deck from the graveyard using Pavetta and pull them all back out again in round three. Finally, we can transform all those humans into revenants with Draug for a huge finisher. So, let's look at, look at the rounds in a little bit more of detail. In round one, whether we decide to win round one or lose round one, we generally want to copy Blue Stripe's commando as many times as possible and play Ronvid for carryover as well as deny our opponent's carryover with Northern Wind and or Muzzle. If we have Summoning Circle in round one, we want to open with it and usually wait until it has four charges before playing our Commando. This will allow us to play Commando, trigger Summoning Circle for a Scout, and then zeal the Commando to bring out two new Commandos, both with orders still available. Now, if our opponent uh, is able to answer one Commando, the other one can still be activated to give extra tempo for our Reinforcements or Second Scout. We can also achieve the same effect by, key, by keeping commandos in the deck and playing Merciless in round one. But this is something that we have to decide as early as the mulligan phase. If we do use Merciless in round one, we will have to make sure that we have access to commandos in round three by either playing Pavetta in round two or draw, and, and then drawing into a commando in round three or having both Pavetta and Royal Decree in round three. Now, moving on to round two, if we won round one, we need to decide if we want to bleed round two or not. This just depends on the matchup. In most cases, if we can bleed without losing last say, then the shorter the round, the harder it is for our opponents to overcome our commando burst play in round three. If the round length doesn't matter much, then we could pass round two to ensure last say. If we lost round one, our objective is to survive round two without losing our ability to commando in round three. Locking in our card advantage could also be a bonus if our opponent decides to push round two. We're fine with generally commit. We're generally fine with committing Draug in round two as long as we are not transforming our commandos. Make sure to commit Summoning Circle early in round two if it looks like our opponent is going to push. Now in round three, we need to decide if we want to save Commando Swarm for last say to avoid area of effect cards like and scorch like cards. Um, on the other hand, sometimes it might be right to rush out commandos early and draug early in order to have the damage potential ready to answer our opponent's threats. We should try to spread out our humans between the two rows so that we can avoid getting hurt by the row limit. If we get to round three with four or more commandos in the graveyard and, or deck, sufficient leader charges to get them out, and last say, then we should be favored. The challenge really is in getting to this point while meeting all of those conditions. 
Now, when it comes to our leader charges, we'll usually be spending two charges for commandos, once in round one and once in round three. And the final leader charge on Selkirk. Notice that this does not allow us to use a charge for Roche Merciless. So it's usually quite important to find that death blow target on Roche Merciless. Sometimes we might want to take a risk by not using leader charge in round one for the round one commando. And then that way we'll have some more leeway with our leader charges for later. And sometimes we can find that opportunity to do it when we go first in round one because the tactical advantage can pr help protect our commando in certain matchups. But you just have to understand what your opponent's capable of doing and judge if you're likely to be able to protect your commando or not. Now let's talk a little bit about specific matchups. Like most decks, we want to identify what our opponent's win condition is and adapt our game plan around that. If our opponent is playing a Scorch deck, for example, then we want to win round one to get last say in round three and just save our Commando Swarm for our last play, even if that means wasting potential on Draug. If our opponent is playing DJ Igor, then we want to save our Selkirk and Anseus with a full test charge each for their two townsfolk so they can't have the, the, the chance to copy it with Igor. Or we need to bleed his Igor and or Summoning Circle out in round two. If we're facing Nilfgaard, then we want to win round one, and we're fine with taking a long round three where our second to last play, Draug, cannot be super locked since our opponent will only have one card in hand at that point. Against Ardle, try to save Muzzle for Hefty Helga, as that's our only good way of dealing with that card. And against the Mirror, prioritize denying Commando carryover with Muzzle and Northern Wind. Many Commando variants also play Lacerate or Sabrina, which will make them stronger than us in a long round 3, so we might be better off trying to bleed in round 2. As always, it's very helpful to know our opponent's deck just as well as our own deck. Alright, let's move on to potential tech cards. There are a lot of variants of this deck, and some of it is personal preference, while others depend on the meta. Uh, Queen of Dahlia is a big one. Queen of Dahlia is a card that was very popular for this archetype last patch, um, but I think she's not as good now. Uh, Queen of Dahlia, she serves kind of the same role or purpose as Roche Merciless does, but Roche Merciless just kind of does it better. Adalia is worse now with the buff and rise in popularity of Tourney Joust, because Tourney Joust will actually go right through the shield that Adalia creates and, and kill that four-point commando even behind the shield. We could still potentially play both Merciless and Adalia, um, but we'd, we would have to sacrifice either Muzzle or Bloody Baron, which is a pretty steep price to pay. Adalia is a card that relies on some uh, draw luck to be effective, because you need to have her in round one with a commando in round one. Uh, but she has a high value ceiling when draw RNG is on our side. Mm, Kara Metz is another one of the high provision cards that got reworked this patch. Kara Metz, um, she she's, competes with Bloody Baron over the 10 provision slot. Like Baron, Kara has a high floor and a very high ceiling. Her floor is slightly higher than Baron's, but her ceiling is not as high as Baron's. Uh, Kara's Vitality Effect also has anti-synergy with Draug, because usually by the time you Draug, if you play Kara before Draug, then you're going to be transforming some of that Vitality off by, by using the Draug. And Kara is also kind of weak to Muzzle and Seize effects, because um, if you say, for example, Vitality of 4, that'll go to 5, and then they can Muzzle it, and they'll get the full 8 point unit swing because the vitality stays even after they muzzle or, or seize the card. Um, another tech choice potential is Visigard. Visigard is a card that is surprisingly decent in this deck despite it not having Meave as the leader. Foltest provides a few boosts and our bronzes have a lot of boost on them too. Like PFIs, Kedwani Sergeant, Cintrine Enchantress are are all good bronzes that can help Visigard get more value. And worst case scenario, Visigard is a 6 for 8, which isn't too bad, and he's a human. Now, last but not least, Lacerate and Sabrina are good cards to have in a long round 3, and they potentially can be considered for this deck, but they can also be liabilities if drawn in a short round 3, especially since opponents tend to push this deck deep into round 2. Sabrina is even riskier than Lacerate because it 
usually can only be played after we play Draug. It has to be played in the same round as Draug, and um, sometimes you just don't have them together. That being said, these two cards help set up more Revenant targets and would give us a big advantage in the mirror. So that's it for this deck guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys get a chance to try this deck out. It's really strong right now. Um, and we've got a couple example games for you following this. Uh, let me know what you thought about this in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. All right, we got Ardle. So we should be decent against Ardle. We don't really have that many like threats for Ardle to answer. And Ardle typically doesn't play artifact removal, as far as I know. We're going second. We want to try to... We can probably try to push him, like, try to win on this this uh, round one on even. We have the summoning circle, so we can keep a commando. We can probably even keep this hand. The mauler is okay. It's probably gonna get, it's probably gonna die, but we need some sort of like uh, bad card to play with the mauler, or a bad card to play with the summoning circle in this round, because we kind of need to buy some time before we can play the commando and the summoning circle and the zeal. Oh, Trahern. that's new. So I think I'm going to take advantage of this and, well, let's see. Is Ardol going to have something? I guess we can bleed this guy. Bloody Baron, we can ble we can use Bloody Baron on the Sergeant later in the round and use the Selkirk now to kill this Fire Scorpion. We're scared, like, without the muzzle in our deck, because the Trahern got rid of the muzzle, we can't answer the Hefty Helg anymore, or it's a lot harder to answer the Hefty Helg. He does run a seer since he's not um he's not changing the roach. So this is where we play our commando. We summoning circle out our blue stripe scout so that we can get two commandos out on the same turn. This is really powerful because like for the most part he's not going to be able to answer both of these, which means we get 8 point reinforcement and 8 point blue stripe scout. He will probably be able to answer one of them. There's the muzzle for the carryover. But our 8 points on the Reinforcements is going to get us ahead here. We want to play the Reinforcements first, I think. In case we decide to pass, then the Blue Stripe Scouts is better than having the Reinforcements. He's playing a 4 here. I mean, it's a, technically a 5, but it's pretty slow. And he uses Leader. I think I'm okay with keep playing. We only need 13 points. So we can play Scout, and if he passes, we can play Bloody Baron. He's going to have to pass soon, because once we get their summoning circle out, it's another, like, six tempo that he needs to keep up with. This will give us more carryover as well. Even though it's not tempo in this round anymore, it does give us more carryover. Yeah, and he passes. So we can use the Bloody Baron to catch up. We don't want to use any of this other stuff. This He has one more, he has one more uh, Fire Scorpion that we want to keep the Anseus for. Bloody Baron might be bad later on, since he might not end up playing his second Sergeant, and he might not boost very much. He could be playing, like... He could be playing, potentially, um... Garrison? I don't think we're that scared of that. So we get last say now, which means that he can't even super lock our Revenants. He did steal a couple of our commandos, but we still have three commandos, right? The one in the deck that we didn't pull out, two in the graveyard. We're looking to draw Roach, Merciless, or Pavetta by round three. The safe thing to do here would probably be to pass, to make sure we have last say so that he can't super lock our Draug. I already. 
Infiltrator is annoying, but it's not as bad as like a Arbalist, which would delete one of our commandos. Would be worth four carryover for sure. I say for sure, but maybe not. Maybe we don't even draw into our Pavetta. Okay, this guy's super bad. And don't think we're gonna need this. We have the Anseas for his Manganel anyways. Now, this is pretty unfortunate here because we didn't get our Pavetta. We needed to draw the Pavetta so that we could Pavetta and then Royal Decree the Commandos. Oh no, we can still do it. We can still do it. We can Royal Decree the Pavetta out and then we have the Roach Merciless, right, to get our Commandos out. So that works. I think the first target we give him is the Ronvid, because if he does kill the Ronvid, we can maybe get it back. We have to think about how to set up Zeal for Roche Merciless. We can play the Pavetta first. We have a lot of humans here. It's good. Assassination. I guess I should have played this in the front. Play around the assassination a little bit. So. We don't really need to rush the Roach Merciless. Yeah, we don't really need to rush it because we're not going to Draug until our second to last turn, anyways. To, in order to avoid the super lock. We need to play this front row. We can't use full test on this because we need to use full test on the commando that the Roach Merciless spawns. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Hmm. hmm. So it doesn't look like he has Hefty Helga or his second Fire Scorpion. He might have a Peter. This is what I'm going to hit with the Anseas. Hopefully he doesn't have a Peter. So he's not able to use it to reset that. Oh wow, that's really good. So Vincent's not going to work on this. Unfortunately, Vincent's not going to work on this because the damage will get stopped by the shield. We just want to. We're gonna want to try to keep stuff short, as short as possible, so that he doesn't get max value off of the Selkirk. Stand and fight. He's got Serdox as his last two cards. So we know that he can't prevent the uh, Vincent. So what we can do is we can Vincent that he doesn't have a he doesn't have a slave inventory anymore. He doesn't have a reset anymore. So we Vincent that, and we have to draw now, right? Because if we don't draw now, we don't get the um, we don't actually get the any revenant pings. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we can use the Revenant to kill this one. We're going to have to use the Revenant to kill Draug. Because we need this one to give Zeal to the Roach Merciless, and then use the Fall Test to get these out. 
which is, I think, just enough, because we've got three of them. Oh, a little bit more than... We win by four points. Nice. All right, let's see what we got. We're up against Croc. Close ranks. Okay, so Croc has a lot of removal, which isn't that great against us because we don't have that many removal targets. But he will be able to remove a lot of our humans. Against Croc, we do really want Last Say because he plays very, very reactionary. He's not able to put many points on his side of the board, so Last Say does help us a lot, although it's not absolutely necessary. Hmm... Um, Let's see here, we're going first. We could start with that. We shouldn't need that many proactive plays. I don't want two of them though. Um, we're looking for a, we're looking for like a commando. There we go. The thing is, I don't really want to use zeal on this if I don't have to. We'll start with this first. Um, I'm thinking if I want to tactile advantage. If we tactile advantage, it's bad against like professional. Do we want to save the tactile advantage for this? I think so. I think we'll save the tactile advantage for the commando because we want to. Tr I, I really want to try to get greedy with this. Hmm. If we tactile advantage the commando. We could get two com commandos out at the same time if he doesn't have a way to answer the really tall unit. Okay, that's fine. So when he doesn't have ping, this is when we want to play it, right? Cleaver isn't enough to kill it. Only, only Geralt Professional kills it right now. He doesn't have a lock. He can't Jenga because he we don't have any bloodthirsted units. He needs Professional or needs Curse of Corruption or Scorch. And this way we potentially save ourselves a Zeal. If he does have one of those answers, I mean, we have the Pavetta to put him back anyways. It's not the end of the world. It does hurt here if he answers this, though. If he removes it from the board, we aren't able to copy it with a Blue Stripe Scout. So it's a it's a pretty big risk-reward play. But being able to save a Foltus Charge is also pretty important. Because we might get into a situation where we need two Foltus Charges for the Roach Merciless. And we always need one Foltus charge for the Selkirk. This is a perfect example, right? Being able to read like what potential answers your opponent has. And now he uses the, the Carlo. He's not able to kill it. And now we're able to get two commandos out with orders on the same turn. And and Croc shouldn't be able to answer both of them in one turn. And then we're going to be able to copy it again with, with Blue Stripe Scout. It gives us a lot of extra tempo in this round. Even though he got 11 tempo from his Carlo, us being able to get out the commandos... It's going to be a big difference. Mm, do I want to answer this now? Not yet, because next turn I'll still get full value on the Selkirk. But if I don't answer it now, he might get Shield Maidens out. Like, Croc doesn't really have that many removal targets. He's playing the Priest version, so his second Priest hopefully will draw the Bloody Baron for his second Priest. That would be really nice. And so he doesn't run that many removal targets. We might as well use the Selkirk to remove it now. These dogs have no honor. Make it so that he can't thin his shield maidens out. We still want to play this Blue Stripe Scout, and we still want to play the Ronvid, because both of those plays represent carryover. And if we can get away with it, we'd also be fine with playing these two, um, as long as we don't suspect that we'll lose on even. So if I play the Northern Wind on the Fnatic right now, yeah, I think he's co I think he's committing this to get Shield Maidens out. So if he does play Shield Maidens, that's eight points, eight points minus two from this, and then this one gets plus one. So that's minus one total. That's seven points plus leaders, eight points. So he's at 21. We're pretty safe at the moment. Um, I don't think I need to use the Northern Wind just yet. Especially if he's going to be playing Shield Maiden, he's going to be blocking one of these. 
Could have maybe used the order on the hurt on the damaged one there. We actually prefer a long round three. Because summoning circle is better long in a long round three. Draug is better in a long round three for us. Croc typically doesn't have that many good long round plays. Okay, so we're up four right now. We play this, we'll be up six. Uh, up another six, so we'll be up ten. Two points from that. So he, need, he would need to play a nine to get ahead. What would that be? Maybe like a professional onto the Ronvid. A little bit scary, but I if he had a we know he doesn't have a professional. If he had a professional, he would have used it on the command on the nine point commando at the start of the round. Fabjorn is not enough here. Fabjorn's only an eight, so we play this. We shouldn't be able to get punished here, and that's not enough, right? So we're able to kind of bait out the Olaf here without losing card advantage. Seems good. And we got all our, all of the carryover that we wanted to get out of our hand. Both scouts and Ronvid. We don't necessarily get the last say, but I think we should be fine. Hopefully we draw into Roach Merciless. We have a lot of, a lot of good cards left in our deck. Don't really want this anymore. Royal Decree is great. I think we want a proactive play in the PFI, so we're going to pitch this. Bloody Baron's pretty good too, especially if he has second uh, Priest. Okay, so I'm going to throw away the... Hmm. Hmm. I... Which one is... Which one is less useful in round three? We want to throw away our worst card, right? Enchantress is a six, which is one more than this. But it's only a six if he doesn't kill whatever we buff on the first turn. It's also not as proactive. I think we do keep it just because we have the second Enchantress in there. I think we keep it. I could also Pavetta right now. But I don't want to Pavetta because I have the Roach Merciless already. I don't want to fill my deck with four bricks. You know, we have a lot of good cards that we could still draw into. We don't want to Pavetta this round if we don't have to. I don't actually want to draw into the Commandos. I want to draw into Roach Merciless. Or Royal Decree into Roach Merciless. We only have two good targets for Royal Decree anyways. Either Roach Merciless or Prince Anseus. Summoning Circle here would be fine. It's a nine card round. We definitely don't want that. Anseus is great. Roach Merciless, so we don't even... We can roll a Decree for... <sighs> okay. I think we do pitch the Enchantress here. Because we, we could potentially still draw into Muzzle, which would be great. And if we don't, that's fine. We're going to open with Summoning Circle. We have nine turns of Summoning Circle if he doesn't remove it, which means we'll get get out two fours, probably two Enchantresses. He doesn't have a way to activate it on the turn that he plays this, so that's great for us. Let me just Unseus that. We don't really need to save Unseus for anything else. We have two Zeals left, so we could Zeal like... We could Zeal Bloody Baron, and we could Zeal the Commando. Or we could Zeal Commando and like a Revenant. He has last say. We have to, like, I think the only thing that we really lose to is, like, Scorch. So that's kind of what we want to try to play around. Is to play around the potential Scorch lose condition. And he's already played a 6. Or an Igni, right? Scorch or Igni. Oh, that's great for us. 
the priest means that Bloody Baron's going to get a ton of value. And he's not going to be able to Scorch us, too. Um... I'm thinking if we want a Vincent early. Because there's not really going to be a better Vincent target than a 5. There might be a Jenge. But we also want to play... I think we'll just save the Vincent to act to help activate the Draug. To get more Revenants from Draug. We're going to boost the Pavetta here, because it's, the 7 is going to be kind of hard for him to remove. And it's going to be hard for him to um, to Bloodthirst this one, if we boost it. If we boost this one, it'll still be Bloodthirstable. That's our Merciless target. We probably just take it now. We get our humans out. We can, and as soon as we merciless, we can draw whenever we want. The royal decree. I mean, it's going to end up playing for like a sergeant, but it doesn't matter. The north, <laughs> it's pretty hard for him to to igneous. We're up thirty three points. It's pretty him hard for him to igneous. He has to hit this twice and this once. And we can still play 7s in the back to block again. This 8 is blocking for the front row. And we have Royal Decree or Summoning Circle onto the Kedwini Sergeants. Okay, he takes his full value Hjalmar. That's fine. Do we want to just Draug now? We can Draug now, get rid of this bleed. We'll have two ones on our side of the board, which we can use to copy more revenants. And then we get three turns of revenants. Seems fine. I think it doesn't look like he's going for the Igni, or he's playing Igni, because otherwise he would have hit this one down instead of the eight. This is ten revenants here we have. How is he going to answer this? We still have one zeal off a of full test, which we said we were either going to use on the Bloody Baron or a Revenant. Yeah, no chance, right? His deck is a very removal-heavy deck, um, but it doesn't have that many points on his side of the board. He's going to have to find the right matchups into, like, Meave or any deck that that plays, like, one engine a turn. Croc is really good against. And even against Meave, it's not that good because Meave, it's hard to get the Bloodthirst required for, like, Donar and Pyre Captains uh, against Meave. Croc's kind of um, in a bit of a tough spot in the meta at the moment. 